it's Mr. Bennett here and in today's video we're going to be looking at interference of waves. Um, just want to show you this little animation and talk to you while I'm doing that. So the question is how does a laser read a CD or DVD disc? And obviously when we have waves, and this is what this animation is showing you, is when we have two sources or two wave sources, um, they can combine together destructively and constructively. And um, that is the reason why uh, we're able to use that technology to, to read a CD. Right? And we're going to go through that in this, in this video. Right, so light, we know, has uh, the ability to interfere with each other. And so it can constructively interfere, or we call that superposition, or it can destructively um, interfere with each other, and we call that destructive interference. Right, so when we go to the next bit, so we know that for constructive interference, that we have to have these two waves in phase, and for destructive uh, interference, we have to have them out of phase. And the other thing that we'll be looking at today is obviously the DVD and CD and how that actually works and how that's read. All right, so interference of waves. So both transverse waves and longitudinal waves uh, are able to interfere with each other and superimpose. So in this first picture, we've got two waves adding together to make a bigger wave. And they are transverse waves. And we can do the same thing with longitudinal waves as well. So two sound waves can add together to make a louder sound. Also, if we have the two waves out of phase, they can add together uh, destructively to produce um, basically nothing. All right, and that's what these, these things are doing. So these two waves are constructively or destructively adding together. And we call that annulment. All right, so that's what's actually happening here. Right, so the parts of a CD or a DVD, and we don't really use this technology as much today as we used to, but the, the CD or the DVD has basically a aluminium part which is made of bumps and pits. We have this plastic polycarb coating there. That would be the top of the DVD or CD, and that would have a label there, and we've got an acrylic in there as well. So you're looking at the thickness of all of that, uh, on the actual surface, there are pits and lands. All right? So these are in a spiral. And obviously the difference between a CD-ROM and a DVD is that the DVD holds a lot more information. Because it uses a blue laser instead of a, a red laser, it's able to, to read a lot more information and get a lot closer to that. The, spot, the actual CD basically is a spiral, a spiral from the center outwards. And so when it tracks the, the information, the laser acts, has to actually move to track that information. All right, so when we're looking at the actual bumps themselves, the laser has uh, you know, this particular setup. Now, it takes information to do whatever it's doing in terms of a binary code. All right, so... Uh, what actually happens here is at the edge of the bump, right, we know that these particular bumps are a quarter of a wavelength deep. So by the time a light source hits the edge of the bump and rebounds off or hits the bottom of the bump and rebounds off, that will be travelling at two quarter of a wavelength. So in other words, it will be half a wavelength out of phase. So we see that the DVD or the CD is read that at the edge is at the edge of the bump where we get construct or destructive interference that will read that as a one at the bottom there will read that as a zero at the other corner there it's going to be a one at the top surface it's going to be a zero so it's where we have destructive interference is where we have the ones the rest of them as are going to be zeros. Right, and that's to do with that path difference because it's traveling a quarter of a wavelength down, quarter of a wavelength up, so that's a half a wavelength out of phase. So therefore we'll have destructive interference. I just want to show you a particular spreadsheet that you're going to be using. And so what you can do here is we can look at the constructive interference and destructive interference here. So here what we've got is we've got a frequency of 5, 
between the two wave sources. The first wave is the blue wave. That's got an amplitude of 1. It's out of phase by 180 degrees, so in other words, it's going down instead of going up. And these two waves are adding together, so that's at 3 and that's at negative 1. And that resultant wave is going to be a wave that's got a height of 2. When this wave here is at 1, this one's at negative 3, so it's going to be at 2. Can you see them constructively interfering? All we have to do is change that. Let's put them now in phase. All right, so now we've got our blue wave, which is at 1. Uh, got a height of 1. This has got an amplitude of 3, so these are going to constructively interfere together or superimpose each other to produce a wave which has got um, an amplitude of 4. All right, so if we change the amplitude of that, say the 6, this will automatically change the actual wave there. Now if we change the frequency of the second wave to be um, something like well, the first wave, let's make that 100. See what happens here. All right, so the, the red wave's there. You can see it's been there. The blue wave has got a smaller amplitude but got a higher frequency, and so we're going to have the addition of the two waves. So we've got constructive interference, destructive interference. Let's do an example of destructive interference. Let's make them the same frequency. Let's make them say the same amplitude. Um, and let's put them out of phase by 180 degrees or pi. All right, so we've got one wave going there, we've got the other wave going down the bottom, and therefore we've got destructive interference there. So hopefully from this video, you've basically learnt about how waves can uh, act together to constructively interfere with each other or destructively interfere. All right, so obviously constructive we call superposition, destructive we call annulment, and that's a very, very useful process in terms of when we're starting to look at um, using that to produce video and sound on CDs and DVDs.